here we are on Wednesday, February 5th, and I wanted to check in after you've completed your discussion activity on sensory investigation. First of all, I want to say how universally awesome the writing is that everyone did and how fun it has been for me to, first of all, enjoy your language, your, your creativity with language, your prowess as writers, and to try to figure out what your food objects were, which sometimes I could do and a lot of times I could not, <laughs> which was really fun and interesting. Um, my goals with this first assignment was to show you right at the start that you already have the essential talents that you're going to be using in art historical writing. This idea of being able to investigate with your senses and to describe vividly is a critical art historical skill. So it's thrilling to see you all doing that already. And I'll tell you just one example out of how countless students examples I could use. I'm going to single out Thomas Black. Here you are on the spot. This is such a memorably imaginative example, as many of them are. So sight, the light shines off the matte forest green of this food. Through the withered shape, shadows appear where valleys are and lighter spots appear where crests are. Notice how physical and specific the language is. When rolling the food, a crunching can be heard from the interior. It might be slightly hollow. A subtle, smoky smell, again, being very precise and very concrete, not just an interesting smell, but a subtle, smoky smell. And then with touch, these amazing figurative uses of language. If you have ever touched a snake before, that is a pretty accurate feeling. I'm not sure that I have. If I did, I repressed the memory, so I'll just assume you're right. But this one too, imagine holding onto your grandmother or grandfather's finger, except there was a solid curved rod coming off of where their knuckle might be. Look at how description becomes so creative. It is a creative act to actually try to be very accurate. That's one of the most interesting things about studying the arts. And then the crunch of the skin of the food starts this journey, and then we get there is a crunchiness in the center of this food after swallowing it. Your throat feels as if someone lit a match. So this kind of language, which is very physical, very concrete, very vivid, I want you to keep doing it when you turn to art objects with the next assignment. Because what you've already started doing here is a talent that you're going to be using again and again. It is perhaps the most essential skill in art history where analysis of an art object starts with describing it. And here you are, you're already in the realm of analysis because we've broken it down by the, the, the different elements of the human sensorium, the human sensory apparatus. Now in the upcoming assignment, you're going to have it broken down in a similar fashion, but by the elements of art. So I want you to think of this assignment as continuing that act of describing vividly, but now doing so with these formal elements that you will be learning about with the help of your textbook. And you're using those as the, the components for breaking down your observation. So this textbook starter kit is a kind of guide to what we call visual analysis or formal analysis, how you can address an artwork in terms of its form overall, but also in terms of the components that make up form, such as line, shape, as they show you different shapes, and color. And they go into the subtleties of an element like color, which turns out to be more than just one thing because it has the elements that we call hue. Is it yellow? Is it red? Is it blue? But it can also have to do with how saturated it is, how colors relate to other colors, how blue is the complementary or oppositional color of orange, and they explain that. So this is a kind of um, encyclopedia of art elements and vocabulary that provides tools for analyzing art that you are going to come back to a lot. So I'm reminding you that this next discussion board is due tonight. You're posting.
And then step three, your response to each other, which is very important, is due tomorrow because you are working together to master this, this skill of describing in order to analyze. In art history, there's even a famous fancy Greek term for this, ekphrasis, the description, the act of describing what you see. And, you know, it used to be back before the age of digital photography, when art historians were reading and studying artworks, the old art books that had been published in the early 20th century, 1910, 1920, 1930, did not have very many photographs illustrating them because the reproduction of photography was expensive and there wasn't, it wasn't as easy to send images. So this whole idea of describing an artwork in order to explain it was actually at the basis of the discipline. And even though now we live in an era of, you know, image glut, where we're drowning in images and photographs are everywhere, this skill is actually not just a skill of saying, look, this is what I see. It's a skill of saying, notice what's worth noticing in this, right? So, you know, in one of those postings from your peers that was describing the gooiness of a brownie, it has, I have clearly noticed what that person was noticing because I'm going to go get myself a brownie today, this afternoon to have with some tea because I've been craving it since I read that last night. So that's good writing. That's what good, good writing does. And see, you already know how to do it.